All right, we are live. So we'll just, we'll just, we'll just hang tight for just a couple of minutes. All right, cool. And then, um, of course, after after we end this broadcast, it'll it'll it's being recorded, and um, I'll I'll edit out this this piece in the beginning, and if, if there's any extra stuff at the end before, Great. and then um, it, it'll be on YouTube for anybody else to watch afterwards, and then you're okay. you're free to share it and use it with your resources and things like that. Great, thanks. Yeah. All right, let's get things rolling. You ready? Yeah, let's do this. Cool. Thanks, Kate. All right, guys. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, depending on uh, where you are. I think it's just about lunchtime for me, and Gabe just getting his day started. Yeah, right early at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> five a.m. Getting ready for the work day. I'm really excited to do this first. That'll be good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, really appreciate you waking up early and kickstarting your day with us. But uh, I'm Mike Fricano. I'm uh, I, uh, um, I'm a CoSpaces EDU ambassador and a MergeCube ambassador, and Gabe's also a uh, an ambassador as well. And um, I wanted to bring Gabe on to share um, a really cool project that he's doing with his students involving uh, CoSpaces and uh, the MergeCube add-on. Um, but before we get to that, um, uh, Gabe, want to introduce yourself and tell us who you are and where you're at and what you do? Yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks for having me today, Michael. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I'm really excited about this. I, I'm in Singapore teaching at Singapore International School, um, but I'm from California, um, grew up whole life there, and um, just in 2015 moved to Singapore and started this new chapter in my life. My wife and I are here, loving life in Singapore. It's pretty great here. Um, a lot of people back home um, might be a little less familiar with where Singapore is on the map, because it's this little tiny dot. They even call it the little red dot. But um, but yeah, uh, teaching fifth grade, and I've been teaching fifth grade the past two years. Before that, I was teaching second. And I have always tried to find a way to integrate technology into my classroom in a meaningful way. I mean, obviously, uh, for myself, I'm just I'm passionate about technology, and I like playing around with the newest, latest gadgets and technologies. But uh, in my classroom, I always strive to find a way to use it if it's meaningful and if it's powerful for the students. And if it's not, uh, it doesn't make its way into my classroom. There's nothing wrong with you know going analog. <laughs> so, um, so when when the Merge Cube came out last year, that was something that I was kind of tinkering around with, and I decided that I wanted to find a way to work this in because I thought the power of being able to hold augmented reality, you know, they say holograms in your hand mm -hmm. um, and potentially interact with that. I, I thought that was really powerful. But I think the true potential has really been, been unlocked now that they've uh, kind of partnered up with CoSpaces. And now that you're able to actually create augmented reality uh, uh, content for the Merge Cube, uh, I think that's the really powerful part. So. Anyway, uh, I've been working on this uh, fantasy writing unit with my students, and um, they, they've they created their own characters and worlds and really done a great job with their imagination and their writing skills, and so a few of them are ready to, to get to the next level. And so I've um, given them the opportunity to showcase their art and their creativity um, through augmented reality. And so the inspiration kind of came from um, one of my childhood interests, uh, I was definitely, you know, the nerdy kid who liked to collect uh, comic book cards. You know, I'm, I'm still into comics and comic book cards. And, and uh, so, you know, you've got these cards. We've got Captain, Captain America. We've got classic Wolverines, ones from 
1992. It's got like the bio on the back, right? Oh, cool. I've got, yeah, I've got Thanos, one of my all-time favorite characters, right? Um, and then, of course, you know, Captain Marvel's coming out soon, so I've got my Captain Marvel. There we go. Um, and so it's just, you know, kind of a silly thing that I'm interested in, but I thought, whoa, the kids might really enjoy doing something like this too, maybe creating their own digital trading cards um, that then they can put onto the Merge Cube and kind of interact with, uh, mess around with the coding a little bit. So today I'll just show you a little bit about um, the demo that I created and the process and uh, some of my students have started creating them, but their prototypes aren't ready for sharing yet, but eventually I think we'll put them all up onto a shared Flipgrid and get them shared out to the world, so. Cool, oh, I yeah. love that, that app combination. So you do, you, do you use a lot of Flipgrid in your class? Um, you know, I don't, not as much as I'd like to. Um, it's just a time thing, right? Like it's one yeah, of the yeah. things that I really want to do, but just yeah. we use a lot of Seesaw for sure. And we've been trying to integrate Flipgrid a bit more here and there. I think um, there's some there's some really good tools coming out on Flipgrid that uh, like the, I know the, the Disco library and the remixes, uh, the, the yeah. mixtapes. So um so yeah, I'm excited about trying it. I just haven't I haven't had a chance to dive in enough yet. Okay, but eventually. Eventually. <laughs> so many um, things you want to do, and there's not enough time yeah, in the day. It's true. <laughs> so um, let me jump in by um, showing you. I, I had my students start off with um, creating uh, their own original artwork and bios. So I'll just I'm going to oh. share my screen here and show you guys. Once you get uh, set up, just want to let yeah. everyone know those of you. Um, Watching live. Um, if you're watching on the uh, the YouTube page, there's um, a live chat off to uh, the right side of the video, I believe. Feel free to say hi in the chat. And um, as Gabe sharing about his project, um, ask any questions. I'll be monitoring the chat for questions. And if you have any thoughts and ideas of your own, feel free to share them there as well. Um, so I'll I'll be monitoring that as as Gabe uh, shares his project. So, um, all right, looks like you're set. Yeah, so um, oh, I, I started off, I wanted to give my students full creativity and you know uh, the ability to let their imaginations run wild, but I also wanted to set them up for success. So I gave them this bank of kind of potential backgrounds. Now, remember they're writing fantasy stories, so they've got uh, their hero and their villain in some form or another, you know, they've got the whole hero's journey. And so I decided, you know, have some, some basic templates that they could use that are all card size and uh, maybe some more fantasy style backgrounds they could potentially use, some futuristic, some cosmic, some elemental type stuff here. Um, and then I also created um, some samples that I used in my own project. So um, I just kind of, so here's an example of kind of a basic one here. Um, the idea was they could have their student art on the front and their character title, and then from there we kind of we kind of ran with it. I decided they need to have their um, the name or sorry the title of their story. Uh, so I created this. Uh, I, I haven't actually written the story, but it's a nice concept for one. Um, I decided we could call it the Fire Within, and so you'll notice all kinds of on the nose references, but. Uh, so here's the main character, our hero, Flint Ignacio, and this is the front of his card that I created. Um, I did this using Pic Collage, uh, and it's, a, it's an app that you can use really, um, it's, it's really great for the iPad. Um, my students have one-to-one -one iPads, and so that was really helpful for them. They actually use the, the Pic EDU version, um, which I think is a little bit more family-friendly when they're doing the web searches. Uh, so yeah, I used Pic Collage for mine and added all these elements. Uh, the the animation there, I didn't, I can't take credit for that. I actually used someone else's, um, but all the rest of that, I put those elements on there. And then here is the villain card, the front of it. And I decided um, I wanted to support them a little bit. So I just used someone else's bio that they had online. I kind of covered up the pieces that, um, didn't really fit for my students and this is what I had I offered as one possible template for my students so they could fill out all this info and add that to the back of the card and then here we go we've got the back of our villains 
card, his bio, got his famous quote, <laughs> and the back of the hero card there. So once they have all that art created and they've got their thoughts out, that would be the next step where we take it all into, uh, into co-spaces. So I'm going to flip over here to my iPad. And let's try to move this out of the way here. Uh, let me just show you um, kind of a couple of proof of concepts first. So we'll go into my draft AR fantasy trading cards here. And we can see, so I'm, I'm navigating on my iPad right now. Um, let's just take a look at it in augmented reality. Let's see here, using the merge cube. Okay, so this is really just like the most basic way I wanted my students to be able to see and interact with the uh, the cards. And I mean, there's not much to do at the at this point, right? They've got their card and they can see it, great. But I think the real magic comes in the coding um, and like, what can you do with that? So I had some students choose to, instead of creating like the card on top here, uh, they made a digital, iPad that was floating above the cube and it's interact uh, interactive so you can click on different buttons on the iPad and different things happen with the character. Uh, I've got another student who they decided like, ah, yeah, your, your idea of the cards is kind of cool, but I'd rather just put my images on the cube itself. I was like, okay, go for it. And so I've got a student who has all their images on the card. Um, oh yeah, you see it, it should work <laughs> with the giant merge cube there too. Oh yes, and it does. Giant trading yeah. card. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, let me take you back, though. That, um, let's show you over here. I had the idea, like, okay, so since my story is all about um, all about the fire within and all of this um, lava and fire, um, I wanted to try to take a look at possibly hiding the cards inside of this volcano. And then you've got two buttons. One, you push for the hero, and uh, the hero card flies up when you push for the villain. Um, it was a little clunky. It was a little difficult for me to code, and so um, I had some learning that went into that one, and my students gave me some feedback. Um, so I actually have this on hold. I ditched that idea, and I went straight for this dispensing machine. So here we go. This is our, our flaming card dispensing machine. Um, so you can see on this side, I've got the hero button and over here, we've got the villain button. Um, let me just show you how it works super fast. And then, um, I'll show you just how to build some of the things that I've got going on here. So let's go into AR. Let's use the big cube cause why not? <laughs> and, um, okay. So what you can't hear at the moment is that I've got this coded to, uh, when you hover over the button. Uh, it's actually coded to make a uh, noise. And this is one of my favorite features that CoSpaces has just added. Um, so I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, you hover, make a noise, and then when you click, the hero card, oh, hello. Oh, yeah. right there. <laughs> when you click, the hero card pops up. Cool. Okay. And then if we flip it around, I hope the coding has worked properly. When you flip it around, so it's still got the hero up there. But we click the villain button, and they swap. Ah. Yeah. So, um, cool. yeah, so there's a, a lot more potential of things that we could be doing with the coding here. It's pretty basic. But let's show you how I kind of went through the process of creating this. So I'm going to make a new scene here. Um, OK. Oops. Not bad. Let's actually just go home. I'm going to create a new space. So if you were starting from scratch uh, and just trying to build something similar to this, uh, we've got our merge cube. And obviously, you've already had your students or you have created the artwork and the bios. So um, I, at first, I was thinking, OK, so I want, to, I want to upload the cards, right? And so I go to my camera roll, and I select the front of the hero card, OK? And I, I quickly realized, and my students figured this out too, that when you upload the picture itself, and let's say we put it there, make it big, um, you can't actually make a front and back card because it's only going to show the oh, front. Weird. 
right? And yeah. so when you flip it around, yeah. yeah and, and so that's not surprising, but when you try to upload the next one, let's say I want to put the back. Okay, so go to my camera roll, select the back of this card. I can rename these later for coding purposes. Um, okay. Yeah, you probably don't want them all to be called last taken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I definitely uh, teach my kids to go through and, and rename everything um, appropriately. Okay, so the idea would be I want one of these to be on the back, one of them to be on the front, and they've got this nice attach feature. Um, and I've started using my iPad a lot more with creation because um, it's really user-friendly. Um, attach, so I want to attach it here. So ideally, this would be the back of my card. I flip it around and there's the front, but it's not. So they, they brought um, the attach feature to the iPad? They did, and it is amazing. What? It's, it's really like I, I've cool. I, I've always been old school with just using, you know, the, the mouse has given you so much uh, functionality. Uh, but with the iPad having the attach feature is really nice. Anyway, so you can't just put um, pictures together like that. You could attach them to the side of the cube, but that's not really what we're going for at the moment. So instead, um, I went into Upload and went to, a, oh no, sorry, Library, 3D Models. I'm going to Building. And if I go to Three Dimensional and add any of these three dimensional objects, then I'm actually going to have a thing that you can hold. Otherwise, it's just a 2D image. So I went, actually went to Cuboid. Um, to make things easiest here. And, and I kind of wanted to make it roughly the same size as the card and then flatten it out quite a bit um, so that it's still got depth, but it's really just, you know, kind of a, yeah. a thick card. And now I've got a surface on which to attach. I can attach there to the front. I can resize later on if I want. And I can attach there to the back. And obviously it's not trimmed up. I need to do some resizing there, but now I've actually got um, a whole card that I could use. And if I group these together uh, and lock the images, then I don't risk messing around with the dimensions. So there's our hero card. Um, the other thing was, so now that we've got this as one card that I want to keep together, um, it was I found that it was easier to group things and manipulate uh, groups of objects on the laptop rather than on the iPad. But yeah. um, the coding part, like let's see, I want to actually make this do something eventually. So if I double tap that cuboid that we had, or I'm just going to rename that as hero card. Okay, hero card. So now I can actually use that in co-blocks. And since those images are attached to the cuboid, which is now called hero card, it should work out fine. Um, and let's say I didn't want my card to be visible straight away. I could either code it to be invisible, um, or I could hide it inside the cube, depending on uh, what I'm going for. And so I decided I kind of wanted to do like, uh, the big reveal card dispenser. And so I have both of my cards, the hero and the villain, hidden inside the cube uh, for the the actual finished product that I have. So that's that's something I, I'm, I wasn't aware of with. So, so because you attach the cards to the cuboid, mm -hmm. all you have to do is is code for the, the cuboid. Yeah, and actually. The cards will, will follow wherever they, wherever it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let's go over cool. to when, know that. Yeah, when hero card is clicked. Let's see, what do you what do you want to happen, Michael? Um just yeah, let's just move it up. Transform? Okay, let's move it. Yeah. Sure. Oh, and the other thing I realized was um I had been uh I had been trying to like raise it out of the cube and so I would go to move hero card, you know, uh five meters up, right? Mm -hmm. Um and let's do it in half a second because I want it to go a little faster than that. Uh, if I hit play, I can try this out. Oh, and you guys get to say hello to my cat, Olive, here, who's hanging out with me. <laughs> Olive, say hi. Hello, Olive. She's like, I don't <laughs> care. OK, um, so if I click on the card, it raises. But then if I click it again, 
oh, it's going to keep oh, going, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, so that's one thing you got to consider in the coding there. Um, the other thing was I realized if I don't want to deal with coding it to only go up so high and then come back down, uh, this, the equal amount, uh, instead of moving up, I actually moved to an exact location. So uh, let's get rid of move up. And instead, let's move hero card. Let's do half a second again. And let's move it along the z-axis. And we'll move it up. Let's see. Two, let's, well, let's try five. Maybe you're not sure which axis. Maybe you're not sure what value. But if you tinker around with it here and there, you'll figure it out. So if I hit play, uh, let's click on it now. Oh, there we go. And if I click it again, nothing's going to happen because it's already at five on the Z axis. That same position. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Um, and then you can just simply do the reverse when you have your, um, let's say you had your villain card in here, you could code this when so, villain card is clicked. And so so in, in this case, because you're using the merge cube and the merge cube defaults to the center of the space, zero, zero, zero would be at the... Correct. Yes, the origin. The cube, right? You got it. Zero, zero, zero. Which um, it's it's challenging if you're trying to put anything on the bottom of the cube. Then you've got to raise the cube up or rotate it. Um, but let me actually go back to my creation here and open up the coding. Uh, it's still a work in progress, but I've got some done here. Um, you might not have seen it yet, but you've got. Um, I think two weeks ago, CoSpace has just put up some really great, powerful, like short, concise tutorials on how to use some of the functions in CoBlox. So um, I've been devouring those and showing them to my kids. So you'll see I've got these giant functions that I've created, um, which is a nice way to try to keep your coding um, organized and tidy. So if I just open up my whole coding, uh, you'll notice I've got hero button click, villain button click, hero button hover and villain button hover. Um, I coded each of those functions here and then slapped them into my when play clicked. Um, that way I've really just got a nice tidy lines 25 through 30 right there are really going to be my entire code for this so far. Um, uh, that's a really good idea. I, I never... Yeah. Thought of functions that way. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a professional programmer. So oh, and by no means learning to do. <laughs> am I? Yeah, I I am totally self taught, and most of the stuff I know is just because my students said like, "Hey, Mr. Haydu, you're doing that uh, not as efficiently as you could be." But, <laughs> and I'm sure I I hope that viewers out there can uh, give us some comments and feedback about the coding because I'm sure I'm doing something that's not great, and they can fix it for me. But um, yeah, and they um they just um. They just released a new beginner's tutorial for CoBlox. Yeah, yeah. So um, in my function for hero button click, uh, when the hero button is clicked, um, I, I clicked, right, I said to run parallel because I want all three of these things to happen at the exact same time. I want it to play this button click noise that I actually uh, recorded myself. Um, and then I want the hero card to move up and I want the villain card to go back to the origin if it isn't already there. And if it is already there, nothing happens to that villain card. So that's great. And then the complete opposite for villain button. And then when it's hovered, I just wanted to make it obvious that you were hovering over something that was clickable. So that's where you've got the um, play sound. Uh, for, and let's go to hover, hover on and hover off. It's this new sound file, I didn't title it properly. It should say hover on. How did you um, record that that sound? Wow. Let me show you, you actually. This is all right, so this is one of my favorite <laughs> new things they've got. So let's say let's just um let's put another button on the side. Why not? Let's say we've got another character. Let's get rid of this volcano gif that's just kind of randomly sitting there because it's cool. Uh and let's add um, let's add another button. So I just went to the web search function here and I was able to search up someone else's button that they had created, which is awesome that we can do that. And I'm going to attach it to the side here. Okay. Move it out a little bit so we can see the whole thing. Make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So this will be um, maybe for our sidekick. 
but I won't go through the hassle of titling it at the moment. I want it to sound like a button. And so I can go to upload. I want a clickable surface, so I'm going to upload um, a circle here. And instead of clicking on the button itself, uh, the button is considered that entire uh, that entire 3D model. So instead, I just want you to be able to click the surface of this button. Does that make sense? So I'm creating. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Uh, and then I want to set the opacity to zero uh, so that we aren't able to see that. All right, there we go. So now I've got that clickable uh -huh. circle that's right there. And I want to make it sound like it's clicking so I can go to upload sound. Um, see this part at the bottom of my screen here? It says record. Um, I can simply mm -hmm. click on record. And oh my gosh, it's so easy. So I actually have. Um, I have my students recording their own sound effects instead of trying to figure out how to find a good sound bite that they're legally allowed to use. They just simply make That's it. Great. So um, let's see. This is going to be my, hmm. oh, let's pretend we're doing the hero button. And I want it to sound kind of triumphant, right? So they click on the hero button, and it makes a good hero noise. So I'll record it here. <laughs> Forgive my lack of professional sound effect quality. Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. All right, and we'll title it <laughs> Hero Sound. OK, um, I don't think it's going to play through uh, our audio here, but let's try it out. So, yeah. Um, unfortunately, hopefully you guys can use your imagination. But I <laughs> now have that hero sound, and so if I go to my coding, and I go to when hero button is clicked. Instead of playing the button click noise that I recorded with my tongue going, uh, I can go to hero sound. And now when they click the hero button, it's going to sound so heroic, and their hero card will pop up there. <laughs> I could do the same for villain and do my dun, dun, dun. That's <laughs> um, cool. I've also, in the past, I've also coded like um, background music, or I downloaded free to use background music. And so anytime they enter the scene, um, there's already some sound effects happening in the background. Let's set the mood a little bit. Um, let's see here. I was, I was going to mention something about, oh, over here on the side, one thing that I think is a little underutilized. Um, in, well, at least I've seen my students forget about this. If you click on the menu button right here, you've actually got a list of all the different yeah. assets. Oh my gosh, it's so helpful, especially. I'm always I, reminding my students about this because they always forget. Yeah, like <laughs> it's a very too. It's not an obvious feature. It is. Yeah, and I mean, so you as viewers know that my two cards are hidden inside this dispenser. So you can't, if you want to modify them, it's really tough to get to. But if you go over here to the sidebar, you can see, okay, villain card. If I click on it, now I've instantly highlighted the villain card. And now I could bring it up, move it around, change the sizes, make any changes that I need to make. And if I don't, if, if I don't like what happened, I can just undo, no problem. But I think that's really helpful. Uh, the other thing I would say is if you're on uh, a laptop, it's really easy to do the same thing. Um, and then if you just tap V on the keyboard, it instantly zooms in on that thing. So like on my iPad, I have the freedom to kind of move around this field really easily. I can slide it around. That's not so easy. I don't know, maybe I'm missing a hot key. But it's not as easy for me on yeah. a yeah. keyboard. So if you just tap that V button, it instantly zooms in on whatever you're trying to modify. Good tip. Yeah, let's see. Um, there are so many. OK, let me go back here. There are so many possibilities with this particular project, I mean, with any of these projects. But um, my students have really um, really tried to. No, that's all right. Is that your, uh, your recess bell over there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my students have tried to kind of push it to the limits. And so they've got all kinds of great ideas about things they can add, things they can code. Um, but it's all centered around their own, you know, student-created 
Uh, let me go back over here. Their own student created art that they used uh, some other apps and you know their actual art skills to create. So um, let me see here. I was going to take you guys. Okay, I will go back here. Um, I was going to take you guys to a couple other things that I've been working on. Oh, one thing that you couldn't see on this. Let me go back. If I go to play. Um, I taught my kids to give it a proper um, sign off and so that they're giving themselves credit. They can uh, go to their merge cube there. Oh, and there we go. So I always kind of, if it's not a part of my actual code, I'll have them, uh, I'll, I'll put some sort of like a watermark or, a, you know, uh, put my mark on it. And so I taught my students to do the same thing with themselves. So they got a little portrait of themselves on the bottom and their name. That way everyone can admire their hard work. It's a really good idea. Yeah. It gives them ownership. Yeah. Cool. Um, Michael, I know you're a, you're a tech coach in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah? So mm -hmm. um, could you see any potential ways to incorporate um, some of this into your setting? Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm, I was just—I I posed the question in the chat, like, how can, how could you adapt this like trading card idea with any other project? Like, I'm, I'm thinking science for uh, our third graders' study of the solar system and space. Like, make trading cards for all the different things that exist in space, planets and oh yeah, stars, constellations. Cool. Yeah, right. And Am I still it into, like an interactive sure? trading card? Yeah, I, I can see you now. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, that interactivity is cool, and uh, and using the content that they're already studying as a way to kind of um, focus all that creative energy in one positive direction. I think that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I, mean, I think this would something like this would fit perfectly in 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 an English class, and whatever book they're reading, creating yes. creating cards for characters, interactive and scenes with yeah. I think so. I, I just was, um, I was flipping through the CoSpaces gallery. Sometimes I do that just to kind of get inspiration or to see what's remixable. Cause it's really nice when teachers or students offer up their creations as a remixable project, which I'll do with this to, um, I'll go in there and click on it. Like I said, it's a work in progress. You can probably make something way better if you've got the time, but at least you'll have some sort of a starting point. And if you wanted to even give that to your students as a remixable item, then they can maybe bypass some of the technical foundational steps and move into the, the powerful creation. Yeah. But um, I was gonna say, I, I saw this one on the gallery that was this interactive storytelling. It wasn't using the merge cube, it was just virtual reality space that they had created. It mm -hmm. was so cool. And as soon as you went into a new scene, the narration automatically started and then you could see the different items in the scene um, coded to move and interact with each other. And then at the end of the scene, it would take you to the next one and it would automatically narrate over. It was really cool. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Yeah, there's some, there's some really amazing spaces in the gallery. It's, it just blows my mind some of the things that are in there. Yeah, yeah, I know. And, and that's where I think um, the, the gallery is really cool, but also I think that there's power in trying to utilize Flipgrid as you know a, a greater community of teachers and coming together and putting all your ideas out there. I, I use Twitter a lot to, um, to get ideas from my, my PLN, but um, I think if we had like one shared space where all these great ideas live, I think that would be pretty powerful. Yeah, because I think you know a lot of it, like there's, there's, there's a, a description along with the spaces in the gallery, but sometimes like if you look at a space, it's really awesome and amazing, but you're like, okay, what process did they go through? Yeah. What, what, what unit is that attached to? How did the teacher you know, create time for their kids to you know, put something like that together? Like what was that whole yeah. process? So it'd be cool yeah, to be able to talk more about that. Yeah, and I will say too, this, this project that I'm doing with my students, it's not everyone. Um, I, I offered it up to anyone in my class who was interested, and I only had a few takers. You know, I, I did say, you know, you're going to have to come in at lunch recess to do some of this. And I got a, a lot of them, you know, dropped out. But um, it's an extra project that some of them are really interested in, and so I've got them occupying some of the seats in my CoSpaces license. So as you guys probably know, you know, it's kind of limited and sometimes can be expensive depending on 
the budget that you've got. So making use of that for the kids who really want to jump on and go for it, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Gabe. I really appreciate yeah. you uh, waking up early. No problem. With your, yeah. your videos. I know you have a long bus ride ahead of you to, to start your school day. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Really appreciate it. And, thank you for uh, having me. Forward, yeah, of course. We look forward to seeing um, your uh, your sample project in the gallery and yep. be able to remix it and try it out ourselves. I'm really excited Perfect. about that. Cool. Yeah. And I think in the gallery, if you just search, um, if you just search the person's username, the mm -hmm. their, their stuff pops up. So um, anything yep. with my last name, Heydu, that should work fine. So, cool. Yep. Give right. that a try. Thank yeah. you so much, Gabe. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you to all that uh, that watch live. Um, appreciate that too. This is being recorded, so you'll be able to to watch it after on YouTube, and you can share it with your colleagues and inspire them with some really cool ideas from mm -hmm. Gabe. And uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely have have more of these. Uh, live demos plan. Thanks for watching, everyone. Great. Thank you again, Gabe. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Take care.